Everybody welcome to the stage, Kim Nicholas. Well, I'm only about as half as nervous as I was when I got here, because only <laughs> half of you are here. Uh, my name's Kim. You're all very attractive, especially the judges. <laughs> so picture 1981, which was a long time ago for me. I was 15 years old. Let's see, uh, Lady Diana was about to get married to Prince Charles. That went well. The DeLorean came out. That went well. <laughs> what else? The Poles were fighting for their freedom, right? And uh, Ronnie Reagan was voted in as president. You know, he was an actor. I mean, like, who in the hell would vote a celebrity into office? <laughs> I don't know. So anyhow, the story is titled, I thought about this a lot, um, it's either going to be How I Broke My Jaw at the Circus or Bad Things Happen to Crabby Teenagers. I don't know, which one do you want to hear? <laughs> so, like I said, it was 1981, it was a Saturday morning, the birds were singing, you know how it is when you're 15, right? And the sun was shining, and I thought, I'm going to the mall to see the circus. Okay, I lived in a small town of 8,000. Uh, this was big deal. So I get ready in the morning. I've got my purple eyeshadow on, my Olivia Newton-John hair. Oh, by the way, speaking of Olivia Newton-John, synchronicity. At the same time she was singing Let's Get Physical. Right, anybody want to sing that for me? <laughs> Thank you. That's really nice. Um, I was getting physical with concrete. And in Brookline, Massachusetts, evil clowns were cited. This is an actual headline, which I love the next newspaper that came out and said no clowns were ever found. I found them at the circus. So I get ready, and my mother used to say, I love my mother. I didn't like her so much then, but I love her now. She said, don't ever leave the house with holy underwear because you might get into an accident. Well, guess what? I thought, ugh, holy underwear. Like, what's going to happen to me? What could possibly happen? I'm invincible. I'm 15. I'm in great shape. I'm going to get on my 10-speed, go over to the mall. So I'm over at the mall, and I'm looking around the tents, and I'm just on my 10-speed, and this guy comes out. His name is Delbert. He's got really greasy hair. He's very creepy. He's older than me. And he grabs my handlebars. And he says, hey, I'm Dobert. I'm like really uncomfortable. I'm like, oh, hi. He goes, I've been to clown school. <laughs> OK, so this is a true story. I'm serious. I'm like, that's great, Dobert. So finally, he goes away. And this yellow VW bug rolls up. Now, this is the great part. Tonight, I went over to Ground Zero to get a cup of coffee because I heard that you can't get a seat here unless you're really early. <laughs> and I pulled up behind a VW yellow bug, and I thought, oh, there's my sign, right? <laughs> yellow VW bug, original, pulls up. The window rolls down, and there is Jack Hull. <sighs> He, just the sound of his name even now makes me go like, uh, 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 inside. So he's 16, I'm 15, he's a whole year ahead of me, and he starts to talk to me. Now, Jack has never talked to me. I've been in youth group with Jack for two years, never even looked my way. Love Tammy Jadrosko. Couldn't stand me. He starts talking to me. I don't know what he's saying. I'm just going, uh, duh, uh, uh. Uh, duh, right? He's talking, and I'm like, uh, he leaves. I'm on my bike. I'm so in love. And I'm looking at Jack, and I'm looking, and I'm riding real slow, real slow. Well, the front of my tire hit one of the metal stakes of the tent peg. And I don't know, because I'm in my body, I don't know what it looked like, but I can imagine in slow motion that I flipped over the top of my bike and landed face first onto the concrete. Didn't break a bone in my body except my jaw. 
smashed over here, broke clean over here, lost my lip entirely. This is all the work of 1981 plastic surgery where they just take the inside of your mouth and just pull it over and make a lip. <laughs> this tooth was up in my gum. This tooth was in my lip. These teeth were gone, like just gone. And then every tooth in my mouth was loose. I have a huge gash under here. I think I had a head gash. They were picking gravel out of my face at the hospital. Well, just like being in a Stanley Kubrick film, okay, so I lift myself up kind of like this, and I don't feel any pain. And I'll tell you something that's very interesting about emotional and physical pain. They're very similar. I didn't feel a thing. I think at some of the worst moments of our lives, we get really angry with ourselves, and we say, why didn't I cry about that? Why didn't I feel? It's the body's way of giving you mercy. I didn't start screaming until I looked down onto the concrete, and there was just blood everywhere, <laughs> teeth everywhere. And I realized I'm 15, and I'm going to look like Frankenstein for the rest of my life, and Jack will never look at me again. So while I'm screaming, like I said, Stanley Kubrick must have been on the sidelines because all these clowns start running. <laughs> and here comes Delbert. <laughs> and here's Delbert. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. <laughs> My mother's friend is at the mall shopping. She sees the commotion, parts the crowd, throws me into her car, which was not a good idea. I mean, I think I had a head in injury. Rushes me to the hospital. My mother said that when she walked in, she almost passed out. She said she couldn't even recognize my face. It was that bad. Frankenstein was on Broadway, by the way, in 1981. <laughs> I could have played that part. So I get rushed to the dental surgeon. They wire my mouth shut. My face looks like a hamburger piece. I mean, it was bad. And um, they send me home. Not great health care. <laughs> they, they didn't even keep me at the hospital. They just kind of sewed me up, tried to put in a new lip. And I had the brilliance at 15 to tell my mother to cover all the mirrors. Like, I couldn't face it. And I'm really glad I did. I think that would have been a scar that would have never gone away. Um, there's a quote that says, yes, I wrote it on my hand. <laughs> I knew I'd get nervous up here. To live is to suffer. To survive is to find the meaning in the suffering. But to find the meaning in the suffering is freedom. Why did I have to go through that? I wrote a poem once that says, at 11, you realize crying cannot save you. That bad things happen that tears are shed and there is no comfort except what we find within ourselves. I would go on to have more pain. I uh, just had two surgeries, major ones, last year. I have a 13-inch scar on this hip and a 14-inch scar on this hip. But guess what? I can wear these boots. <laughs> I found my meaning. It's in shoes. So... <laughs> I had double hip replacement and a remodeling done. So with every scar, I try to find meaning to this day. And I have great memories of Jack. Thank you.